If you take a look at Ramana Maharshi's teachings, there is a central theme around which his entire teaching revolves. Despite all of the intellectual questions that people ask him, he keeps pointing them back to the self. And the self is not somewhere over there at a distance or even somewhere within deep hidden. It's here and now. The reason we find difficulty in seeing this is because we're looking in an incorrect way. We're not really understanding the pointer. We're not understanding the teaching. And if anything, we're attaching ourselves to the pointer, the teaching itself, and creating many ideas about it. But we're totally not seeing what it is pointing to. So in today's video, we're going to cover Ramana Maharshi's most profound yet simplest pointing back to yourself. And we're going to bring clarity into the practice, how to change our way of looking. Because when you change the, your way of looking, the lens through which you're looking, or better yet, more accurately saying, when we drop all the lenses, what remains is that which he is pointing to. So I'm really excited to share today's video with you. It's a conversation that I recently had, and it will guide you in a very, very simple way. So please watch the entire thing. And as you're watching the video, practice as you're being directed. Here it goes. First, actually, we will just do a guidance where we will sit silently and become clear on what it means to bring our attention to the sense of self, which is I, the sense of identity, which accompanies everything that we do. For example, right now you're sitting and listening to me talk and it is accompanied by a sense of me sitting here experiencing this or just me experiencing this. Even the sitting here is an experience that is accompanied by the sense of identity. Drinking water is accompanied by the sense of identity, my experience, me and experience. Walking, sleeping, working. There's a sense of me which experienced it, okay? So what we do, so, so with this meditation, notice that our anchor, right? Where we are bringing our attention, our anchor has become much subtler than let's say the anchor of the breath or the anchor of the hands, the sensations, or the anchor of the entire body sensations. Because sensations and breath, sound, anything, is an object being focused on. Whereas in self-inquiry, the anchor turns to the subject rather than the object. The anchor becomes the sense of self, not what I am focusing on, but rather the I that is doing the focusing, the I that I am. And that is what the anchor becomes. And that is what it means to isolate the I. If there's a little confusion about this, here's what I mean. Every word, every word, all language is pointing to something in experience. The word glass is pointing to this. The word glass is not a glass. The word is simply there to point you to this. The word pen is not a pen. The word is an empty label pointing to this. The word arm is not an arm. It is pointing to this. So words are empty labels, just signaling. They're just signposts. Language is inherently empty. Words in and of themselves do not mean anything. It is the meaning they hold. It is what they point to that really is, uh, is of significance. Words are just conceptual. They point to something that is actual, okay? That is manifest. So again, the word arm points to this. The word head points to this. In this meditation, we are in, in self-inquiry, we are at least specifically this pointer of self-inquiry, which is isolating the I. We are bringing our attention to what the word I is pointing to. 
And it is only in the beginning, while we are totally lost in the ignorance of our conditioning, our hypnosis, that we take I to be the body. If you say, when I, the word I, when I ask you, what is the word I pointing to? If you say, oh, it's pointing to my body, that is ignorance. That is a, a misunderstanding. You're mistaking the I to be the body. Because, again, and, and this is something that we, we always cover in a very deep way. The body itself is a changing experience that I am experiencing, that I witness. No matter how much the body changes, there is never any change in I, in me. You can, if you think you need more experience to, to observe this, then observe your whole life. There will come a time where you will see, okay, my body has changed so much ever since the beginning, yet there at the heart of it, it is a sense of identity, me, that experienced its changefulness while me, myself, I did not change. No matter what the body looks like, how big or small it is, no matter what phase it's going through, if it feels good or bad, there is a me that is experiencing it, that itself is not changing. So th this is what we start to um, contemplate and wake up to in self-inquiry. And so we're like, okay, so where, but but uh, it, it's a, a given, it's, a, it's so obvious that still there's a sense of identity. So if the body itself is an object and not the subject, so let me bring my attention to I. And you go through the same process with your thoughts as well, you know, because of course they claim to be the self, they claim the sense of identity, your feelings, your, your emotions, your thoughts, the sensations. None of these are I, because all of these are a changing experience, which are accompanied by the sense of self, accompanied by me, I. This is the, the miracle of it all. You start to isolate the sense of I, and you're starting to discover that it is nothing that I usually attribute to I. That I can't really find an object that I can say, this is it, this is I. Yet, I am here. But don't worry about that. That happens on its own as you conduct this meditation. What I'm trying to uh, uh, emphasize right now is every word is pointing to something. It is very crucial that we start seeing, not just intellectually, but in our direct experience. You know, because if you see, oh, oh yeah, no, the body is not I. But like, if, if you're just saying that intellectually, it won't do anything for you. You know, you have to really observe over a period of time, again and again, repeated seeing of this fact that the body is a changeful experience. Otherwise, none of it's of value. The conditioning will continue to have its momentum. Only when you continue to see this repeatedly and, and uh, affirm this, not, not mentally, but in experience again and again, just by isolating the sense of I, you start to see that. Then it starts to really be a, like this insight begins to mature within you. But yes, every word is pointing to something. And here we are trying to anchor our attention in what the word I is pointing to. If you feel this is too subtle, oh, I'm not there yet, or this is too complicated, notice that that is just an idea. It is not true. So at least for this, these moments that we're together, don't entertain those things. It doesn't matter where you think you are in the spiritual journey and what pointer you're practicing. If you're, if you're like, no, I need to stick with the object focused meditation for now. That is fine. Of course I get it, but out, you can do that outside of the talk here today, but during the talk here today, none of that holds any meaning. So please don't entertain those things. Don't, uh, have any value or any, um, significance or interest towards the thoughts of how this has gone for you before or how this will go for you in the future. But instead, just do your best to follow the guidance here today, okay? So you can close your eyes.
Because only if we begin to see this clearly in our silent sittings, can you really bring this into your day-to-day -day life? Otherwise, you will remain lost only in the object, only in the experience that is arising, passing, rather than the sense of identity which accompanies it changelessly. So it is very, very, very important that we, at least in our moments of practice, begin to see so clearly what the word I is pointing to. With all self-inquiry pointers, you thinking about this is of no value, is of no use, because the thinking itself is the activity which is accompanied by the sense of identity, I. Here, only the attention matters. Only the attention. This entire practice is only of a of attention. When you say the word I and mentally say the word I, try to bring your attention to what that word is pointing to. Don't worry about being right or wrong. And don't complicate it. There is clearly a sense of identity, a sense of I present. You're not trying to mentally figure out what is I, what is not. Just bring your attention to the inherent sense of self, sense of I, of identity. If you start thinking about this, just acknowledge that is of no use. Instead of pursuing the content of your thoughts, bring your attention once again to the I that knows thoughts. If your attention goes on the sensations of your body, Bring your attention to the eye that sees the sensations, that knows the sensations. If you don't get this, if you don't understand this, or if you do understand, but it's very, very difficult to practice for you, don't mind that. It doesn't need to be easy. Don't become frustrated. 
Only a fool gets frustrated. A wise person never gets frustrated, but instead just continues to persist with the pointer. Don't mind anything that unfolds to the, during the entirety of this guidance and call. So bring your attention to I, me. The me that knows my experience. I don't care about what I know, thoughts, sensations, feeling, sensation, uh, sensation, sound. I only care about the I that knows. And what I mean by care is where I am bringing my attention. The moment you find your attention in what you know, bring it back to the I that knows. If you catch yourself thinking, it doesn't matter. Just bring your attention back to I. The sense which permeates your entire experience.
in self-inquiry meditation, it does not matter what you are experiencing right now. It could be a pleasant sensation. It could be pain. It could be any number of thoughts. But all of these things are pointing to you, the knower of them. So in this meditation, we are not interested in what we know. It does not matter if it's pain or pleasant sensation or thoughts. We are only interested in the me, the I that knows. And again, it's just a play of attention. Bring your attention away from what you know to I. To know yourself, become aware of yourself. instead of imparting your sense of identity to objects that come and go. Remain anchored in the sense of identity. To know yourself be yourself. This is the greatest unmasking. This is you taking all the costumes off, all the roles you play. And just being, not being a somebody or a something, but simply being. When you bring your attention to the sense I, which is the sense of identity, it actually brings you to the identity less, that which is undefined. nameless, and shapeless. While doing this practice, even a hint of wanting to change something or wanting to make some realization happen, let it go. It is not the way. To know yourself, you have to even 
slip through the grasp of desire. Here in this practice, even the desire for spiritual advancement and realization simply has to be dropped. For you deny yourself, your true identityless self, so long as you continue to cling on to a desire, even for spiritual growth. So in moments of practice, even that wanting has to be relaxed. If we are lucky, our desire for spiritual growth brings us to this point of understanding that even this desire in moments of practice has to be totally let go of. The seeker has to dissolve. Because the seeker itself is the biggest obstacle to this practice. This practice brings you to the edge of knowledge. All knowledge has to be let go of, relaxed. This is real meditation in its purest form, highest form. So you can open your eyes when you feel ready. So just like that, we have to conduct this meditation. And we have to come to see this more and more clearly in our sit down silent sessions. Without it, it will always remain cloudy. How to proceed with this in day-to-day life? We want the, the other way. We want to be able to practice fully and then it grows. But like, try to do your best to, in moments of practice, right? That unveiling, that letting go, that unmasking. These are all the things that keep us stuck in, in, the, in just our thinking and concern and all of this in personhood. So the personhood must be relaxed. And all that means is just keep bringing the attention to the sense of self, which accompanies the experience. The sense of I, which is always there. Even if a thought arises, am I doing this right? Again, you're back into object. Just bring your attention back to I. No need to resolve this before you get to do that. Just bring your attention to I. I that knows, 
this thought, just I. Even the thought that arises and says, oh, I think this is too subtle for me. Again, this is just once again, bringing you back into object. Just bring it back to subject. Bring the tension back to I. Self-inquiry is that simple. No matter what arises in your experience, you just return to the I that is experiencing or aware. And you let the rest happen. It, it's not your job to worry about that. So as you said, Ashok, you know, this is good in practice when I'm sitting down, but then how to, how to bring this into my day-to-day -day activities? Well, firstly, as I said, yeah, it has to begin by seeing it clearly in moments of practice. Otherwise, it will always remain cloudy. But um, acknowledge this fact in whatever experience, you know, even if you're at work or um, at a difficult circumstance or in a conversation, it is always accompanied by the sense of I. You don't have to do too much, at least in the beginning, to focus so much on I in the midst of those experiences, but at least start to acknowledge that all of these experiences are coming and going. The sense of identity permeates all. It remains strong, unchanged. Past, present, future. It's always there. No matter what experience, good or bad, it's always there. Start becoming curious about that. That's a hint of reality. It's a hint of truth. It's a hint of truth in the, in the illusion. But you can start to bring this. I always say it, the only way to really bring this into your day-to-day -day experience more and more is to bring it into at least your idle moments of the day. So when you are not engaged in, in so much activity, when you are driving or uh, in the bathroom or brush, yeah, brushing your teeth or showering or walking or just sitting sometimes, Notice how some, you just constantly want to do something. You're either on your phone or you're reading something or you're watching something or you're talking to someone. Like these things have to be now, it's like sacrifice those things to, to silence. Instead of constantly keeping yourself occupied during your waking hours, when you don't need to be occupied, when you don't need to be speaking, when you don't need to be on the phone, when you don't need to be reading or watching, entertaining yourself, just... This make this your greatest entertainment. It will serve you well. But when you are working and when you are doing those things, I wouldn't try so hard to practice this. Instead, just do your work well. Um, let the spontaneity of that experience take care of it all. You know, do do your work well and trust that you are being guided. This practice will mature on its own as long as you are really becoming curious about this and really giving it the significance it deserves, at least in your sit-down practice and in your idle moments of the day. It will mature on its own, especially even when you make your work and your challenges more so about spiritual development rather than, oh, I just need this one thing to happen. <laughs> so, like circumstantially just be open to like however life is unfolding, have no resistance to anything. And it's very easy to say uh, and very hard to practice, but I promise it's practicable. Um, and, and the teaching takes care of you, you know. But no matter how hectic the activity is, there's always a sense of self. I. So just do your best. You don't have to be perfect at it. You even wanting to try is a good sign. You even remembering to try, even if you don't succeed, even if you, you remember to try, it, even in the difficult circumstances, that's a good sign. Just continue to be genuine in your wish for this. So when you say the sense of I, uh, that I that's unchanging, 
Can you expand on that a little bit? Like when we say the sense of I, um, it's hard to differentiate between the, the body and the personhood and the I sense. Am I required to differentiate between the two or is it just the I sense? I, I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. There's nothing to differentiate and nothing to complicate. Right now, um, you, even this question, there's a sense of I, I'm, a, I'm asking, you know? So just, just bring the attention to I. Where does it go? Then the mind imagines the I. But the okay. imagine is also something you know. Just bring it to I. There is no focusing that happens when yeah, I do that. Yeah, that's exactly what is I. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. So, so then the problem, you just keep... The only time you complicate it is when you start to, start to like find an object yeah. to which to attribute it to then you're going to go off into all these things. But the, the fact is it brings you to a sense of no, no focus. It brings you to a, 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 a pull. and the, I, I don't like to talk about this because I used to a lot. I used to try to describe what, it, when you bring your attention there, what it's, what it is and what it's not. But I've noticed that it just becomes another obstacle and, and the mind creates another image about it. So I've let go of trying to describe that. I'm just trying to do my best to point, but yes, that is exactly what happens. It's uh call it no focus, call it and no attention, whatever you may, but yes. So it's that simple. So, so then that goes away and then I do it again. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I keep yes. doing it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I hope today's guidance helped you. I cannot emphasize enough practice, consistent practice devotion, genuine, sincere devotion. That is going to be the, the greatest thing for you. Now, if you want to deepen your understanding of this practice and teaching, I'm going to attach a free resource down below. It's called my self-inquiry mini course. You can go through it. I believe it will be greatly helpful to you in your practice of self-inquiry. And if this is something that you're having a hard time with and you need my personal help with, uh, I do run a program. It's called School, School of Awakening. It is my day-by-day -day meditation self-inquiry program that's going to take you by the hand, step-by-step -step, down this teaching from the surface to the subtle depths of inquiry. It will profoundly shift your understanding. It will bring great peace into your experience because it is a total relinquishing of all that is dysfunctional, of all that is not essential, all that is not what you are. It is an emptying of the false and a acknowledging of what remains, what is natural, what is ever present. So if that is of interest to you and you are looking to be supported by a community, if you are looking for ongoing mentor mentorship by me, learn more about School of Awakening. I'll link that down below as well. Thanks for watching today's video. I'll see you next week.